Thanks to the supporters of channel member Robert Bannerman. Oh, boys and girls, we survived and it is all uphill from here. We have got a transfer window ahead of us where I'm going to completely rebuild this team from top to bottom. If in a couple of days' time, we're not comfortably top of this league, then today's episode went really wrong. If you're excited for a transfer special or you're just enjoying the series so far, please make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video. 5,000 likes again today would be absolutely fantastic if we can get there. Thank you for all the support so far on the series. It continues to blow my mind. But now I need to get my head down, really concentrate, and make sure this is the best transfer window I've ever done. I feel like I've got a bit of a point to prove. Hello and welcome to part 10 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special. We're going to start things off with the season review. We're not going to dwell on it too far because almost none of these players will be at the club next year. And uh, it was a terrible season. I don't want to talk about it. It was horrible. Um, but signings-wise, signing of the season went to Miles Edmondson, who averaged a 6.92. And I think that sums up just about all of this. Of all of the players that I brought in to uh, supposedly turn the team around, and to be fair, after all the moaning that I wasn't able to bring in my own players, there's, there's 10 or 12 players there that I've signed that really haven't made very much of an impact at all. Uh, Marsh Brown, I think, was quite a good signing. Two goals from six appearances, although he's only averaging a 6.65. But Harry Draper was a flop. Uh, Deadfield, two goals, two assists from nine appearances, but somehow only a 6.52. Shows how poorly he plays when he's not contributing goals. Um, very, very erratic um, form from a lot of these players. The one bright point is Cerny Ando, on loan from Salford, 24 appearances, two goals, and a 7.16. If we bring just one player back for this coming season, it'll probably be him. I don't need Max Dyche now. I can talk properly. After all, my voice has recovered. No need for a Dyche at the club. Uh, the board expected me to avoid relegation, and we did. And I think that's a really important thing to take out of this season. Although, in context of what we would have liked to have seen it's been a disappointing season. Our top scorer only had nine goals, all that kind of stuff. This was a team that was supposed to go down. So we've avoided relegation. We've had a cup run that was far in excess of what we were supposed to have in both competitions. We've overachieved in the two cups. We've met expectations in the league. It's actually been quite a good season, even though it's been quite a bad season. Um, a couple of 3-0 wins sprinkled in there as well. I guess the real high point of the season was that FA Cup game against Notts County, who at the time, I think, were third in the division above us. We beat them 3-0. Um, it's the day Phillips arrived. And at that point, I think we all thought we were probably going to get promoted this year as well because everything was starting to come together. And it kind of fell apart from there. Um, so high point. And then we hit it again in yesterday's episode when we did a 3-0 for a second time. Finance-wise... We've done really well because of the cup runs. The cup runs have made a massive difference. Um, so fingers crossed that will be reflected in the budget that I get offered this summer. At the very least, I'm expecting it not to be reduced. Um, that would be a disaster. And then our team of the year, inexplicably, is in the 4 2 4. Although I guess all of our success was with the 4 2 4, the cup runs and all that kind of stuff was with this system. And it's we kind of switched away from it for the last 15, 20 games because it stopped working. Um, but early on, it was actually working okay. We were doing all right. There's only been a couple of players who've done an, any kind of uh, performance out of it. Mooney, our top scorer of 10 goals in all competitions. It's just been poor. We're getting rid of almost all of these boys. Uh, fans player of the year is Morrison, but he's probably leaving. Ando got young player of the year, but his loan is up. Edmondson signing of the season. I think he's leaving as well. Though. I think his contract's up at the end of the year. Ward got goal of the season. He won't be back. He struggled to get into the team. Mooney, top scorer, but only on 10 goals. His contract's up. He'll be gone. Um, in fact, I might have extended his contract. He might be the one that is sticking around, even though I've not been using him towards the end of the season. Parker on five assists. He'll definitely be gone. Um, it's just going to be a very new look team for this upcoming season. But what we need is budgets to make sure that we're actually going to be able to do what I need to do. And I'm hoping we're going to see those budgets now. The board are looking for me to avoid relegation again next year and start to work towards a top half finish within five years. It's definitely something we can achieve. We want better than just avoiding relegation this coming season. I think we're definitely good enough to at least finish mid-table. Um, but 
as we know with these things with the with the boys, we have to say what the board have just said or else it doesn't work. And we're in a good position to avoid relegation. They're happy. That's pitched that at roughly the right kind of level. So they've gone away happy. Little do they know that almost none of them will be back. Oh, it'll be fine. Um, are we going to get these budgets? I need to see budgets and I need to see them urgently. Um, what is that? Council blocks planning fish. Are we getting a new ground? We'll check in on that in a second. We've got new sponsorship deals coming in. Scouting budget wise, we've got the same one that we had last year, which is fine. Um, budget budgets, I think that's the same as we had. Yeah, all the budgets have stayed exactly the same, which is all fine. What was this though? Although the board would like to move forward with plans, what plans? The local council have intervened and refused to grant full planning permission. New windmill grounds located in Lewington Spa. The what were we doing though? I don't know what the plan was. It doesn't say what the plan was. Were we moving grounds? Were we expanding the ground we're in? I don't think we need to do either. Well, whatever it is, isn't happening because the council won't let us. I don't really care, to be honest. As long as we've got the budgets on the pitch. That's the crucial thing. Now it's time to tell everybody that they're not coming back next year. Some players who will be sticking around, though, we've got our youth candidates who came in last year. There's actually some half-decent ones. We've already had some of our Name in the Game channel members claiming some of them as well. So Ant Chipman um, has our new Irish target man striker, uh, five foot ten, it's sixteen years old. He's got five star potential, two star or one and a half star current ability. Could be ready for the team within the next year or so. We might be seeing something from him. Matthew Bissett um, is a fifteen year old right winger who is nice and quick, six foot two as well with that kind of pace at fifteen. He is going to have quite some physicals when all is said and done with him. I think. Uh, Stephen Boyd the second is our left back, age fifteen with a five o'clock shadow. He's quite impressive, um, and he's also either footed with five star potential, so could be uh, one to watch for the future at fullback. And David Carter is going to be having a long, hard look at Jake Weaver this summer. He's a sixteen-year-old goalkeeper, one star current ability, four star potential. He's officially not yet as good as Jake Weaver, but he'll get there probably sooner than you think. So we've got some decent young players coming through as well. If you want to be involved in the Name in the Game channel member stuff, click the Join button on the channel. Have a look at the Name in the Game stuff. It is all there for you to have first come, first serve on youth intakes when they come through. All the details are on there for you. Uh, but for now, I think we need to just have a look at what we've got in terms of uh, contracts that are expiring. I think it's almost all of them. It's probably easier to sort the other way to see who is here next year. So our backup keeper... Brown, the left back we brought in. Marsh Brown, the right winger. Josh Hill. Kelsey Mooney, we did extend the contract for. And Sam Deadfield. They are our only players who are still going to be here next year. Everybody else is out of contract and going to be leaving. So if we... I mean, what, what have we got there? We've got a striker, a left winger, a right winger. I think we need to move to the 4-3-3 the, the three, three that we were talking about before. Um, probably some kind of counter-attacking 4-3-3 system. So if we aim to build around something like this, if we then clear that team selection and focus in on the players that we've still got, I mean, Lenton's not going to be ready for the first team, so he'd be a backup goalkeeper. Then Brown at left-back, Marsh Brown on the right wing, Hill at centre-back, Mooney up front, and Deadfield on the left wing. That's basically what we've got to build with as a core of the squad. So we need a new goalkeeper, most of a new defence, an entirely new midfield. And then realistically, I think we probably need to upgrade these three positions and turn these three into backup players. Though I'd be very happy to have them on the bench. But I think we can do better than them as starting options. So we have got a lot of business to do. Our committed spending is 3,700, which just doesn't seem right with so many players leaving. Surely we're not spending £3,700 on those six players. Who on, who on earth else is still going to be here? We've got all these players. There's thousands of pounds of a player leaving. It might be a case of waiting until contracts expire and working out exactly what we've got, what we've got to work with. Obviously, if we see any major bargains in the meantime, we'll act. But it's going to be largely a case of waiting for the 1st of July waiting for our players to leave, waiting for youngsters to be released from bigger clubs and getting some trials in. I think that's going to be the plan for the summer. Absolute 
non to legend, back to basic stuff. Um, and Harry Draper definitely not going to be here next year after thuggishly getting himself sent off in the penultimate game of the season. Right, I'm going to hit continue a few times. I'll obviously pop back in if something significant happens, like me getting a coaching course completed. Are they going to let me do another one? They've renewed my contract. It'd be amazing if they let me do another coaching course. And no, um, we have to be selfish here. We fear that if you continue to make that sort of progress, the club could use you to bigger and better opportunities. Look, Jim, we've talked about this before. That is exactly what I want. That's the premise of the series. Please, Jim, can I have... Ah, they are going to fund me a coaching course on appeal. So I'm now studying for my Continental C license, costing £960 covered by Leamington. Brilliant stuff. And now we will just hit continue until the 1st of July. Got to admit, that stings a little bit. Looks like we're entirely rebuilding the defence as well. Oh, talk about efficiency. It's only the 27th of June and we've already got our first batch of trialists in. These are off the back of the recruitment meeting. Um, there's, a, there's a few of them that might be worth pursuing. Danny Parrish, 23 years old, 13 goals in the National League South this season for Welling, five assists. So certainly more goals than any of our strikers managed. In fact, that's 13 goals from 16 starts. He very much might be worth a look, um, especially with Phillips and Draper both leaving the club. He's better than anyone else that we're going to have going into going into the summer. Um, this guy, James McShane, to be honest, 30 years old. I don't really care how good he is. I'm not really interested in bringing more old men to the club. We did that this year. And I think we definitely want to be going with youth this time around. Tyreek Hyde definitely fits that bill. My one concern with him is the only scouted position we've got for him. He's as a Mezala, and I can't imagine we're going to be using a Mezala. So, um, I mean, he can play ball winning midfielder deep as well. So that might be might be an option to bring him in. So he'd also be the best deep midfielder. Um, Cole Gibbon, a little bit younger, but also less certain if he's actually any good. So probably less interested in him as a second option. Giddery, Tarek Giddery at right back, released by Bournemouth. Looks like a decent enough option. And then 21-year-old George Harmon, released by West Brom, was on loan at Oxford City this season. There's certainly some decent options here. So I'm going to get into some negotiations with some of these, see if we can bring a few in before we even hit the 1st of July. I don't want to do too much before the 1st of July because there'll be lots more available then. The one notable thing so far, despite bringing three goalkeepers in on trial, none of them are as good as Jake Weaver. Are we going to go with Weaver for another season? The answer, of course, is no, we're not, because we've released him. It's the 30th of June. We've released Weaver, uh, Kelly Evans, Meredith, Fowler, Lane, Anderson, Turner, Martin, Edmondson, Clark, Parker, Morrison, and Edwards have all been released as first-team players from last season. Um, my director of football just tried to sign a 30-year-old, so I've just cancelled that deal off, not, in, not got any interest in bringing him in. They're the players who are out of contract. I think we're probably going to look to move a couple of them on. I think we can really upgrade throughout this squad. Um, and we've got some decent youngsters coming through as well. But with all those players leaving, we are now down to £2,300 a week of spending, £1,900 of committed spending. We have a micro squad, we'll describe this as, um, but we have signed a player. Um, Isaac Rice has joined us from Gainsborough, where he was playing last year down in Tier 7. Four goals, four assists, four man of the matches, and a 7.12. He's a 21-year-old centre-back, six feet tall, and as good as uh, Ando and Dyche, or almost as good as those two, certainly better than anyone else we're going to have starting things off for us this season. So we are starting to rebuild the team. All of those trials we just had in, every single one of them wanted four or five hundred pounds a week, and we're just not in a position to offer that kind of money. There's some players we've got here at the moment who we're paying too much money to. Kelsey Mooney at £300 a week. I think it's just too much. I think we probably are going to be limiting ourselves to £300 a week unless someone's an absolute superstar and none of them lot were. So we've cancelled all those trials to make room for more trials for um, the 1st of July, which is tomorrow. And if we ignore those loans and ignore the trials, actual players of ours that we've got at the club, um, if we take these lot out... In fact, we can just count them. Plus, we've got eight players. Eight players going into the 1st of July. 
This is going to be busy. Right, we have our first swathe of signings in. Is that even a word? Nobody knows, but we're giddy around here because it's finally starting to look like a squad that is going places. Uh, Charles, uh, do we... I was just going to call him Ondo or Charles. Charles Ondo, Nudwisi. I don't know. Um, he's a Spanish under-19 international, for goodness sake. That's absurd that we've been able to bring this guy in. Formerly of Millwall and Huddersfield. Um, he's a left-back who can also play right-back or wing-back if we go back to that kind of system. Three-star current ability, five-star potential, six-foot-one and quick as well. Just like the perfect player for me. We've also brought in Jeremiah Chilakoa Mullen, who's an 18-year-old Scottish right-back or holding midfield player. He's equally adept at playing in either role. Another one who's six-foot-one, not quite as quick as the other guy, um, but does have the two-and-a-half-star um, current ability, five-star potential ability, formerly of Liverpool and Leeds. So some half-decent pedigree there as well. Michael Roxburgh is a new goalkeeper, 19-year-old English goalkeeper, three-star current ability, five-star potential, um, as it stands, probably still not as good as Weaver. We'll probably look for this guy to be our backup keeper going forward, but we haven't yet found somebody better than him. And he did keep 19 clean sheets for North Allerton down in the non-playable leagues last season, only conceding 22 goals. So he's got some uh, some decent form under his belt and formerly of Huddersfield as well, has had some decent training in the past also. George Forsyth, a little bit older than some of the other ones that we've brought in so far. 25 years old, central midfielder who can also play centre-back or as the holding midfield player. Three-star current ability. Um, he's done the tour of non-league over the years. Kidderminster, Hales Owen, um, Gloucester, Worcester, Hereford. He's, I mean, he's done it all and he's still only 25 years old. Bit of a journeyman, but over 100, over 100 appearances, sort of around the level we're at, mostly they're slightly below the level we're at, but... Um, looks like a decent squad option for us in central midfield. What I'm particularly excited about, because we've just signed him in real life, and by we, I mean Peterborough United, the team I support. Um, we signed him earlier on in the year, um, Kobe J. Chong. Um, he uh, he came to us with an incredible highlights package um, and talk of how, when he was at Kidderminster as a youngster, he ended up at Calgary off the back of just being a stupidly skillful um, talented ball player. The only problem was um, it didn't really work out for him and he's since been bobbling around in non-league and Posh brought him back to the championship. Obviously, in-game, it's not really worked out for him, um, but definitely has the talent to get the job done. And if you're wondering, did get him off of a scout report. He didn't, in fact, no, it was director of football recommendation. But it wasn't just because I know him from Posh and would prefer not to play for Peterborough. I see. He didn't have a nice time there then, but three-star current ability, five-star potential, He's going to give us a little bit of a uh, more attacking option in midfield, either as the Mazala or the box-to-box -box midfield or a more attacking central midfield player. We've then got Shaquille Hippolyte-Patrick, 27-year-old winger, can play on either side, can do a job up front as well, but with four finishing, he's probably not going to. Um, it would just be nice to have a left footer playing on the left wing, although you know full well before the season is out, he'll be playing on the right wing, cutting inside. But for now, the intention is to play him on the left. Three-star current ability, a little bit more potential, um, again, he's another one who's been around in non-league for a while, played for lots of different clubs, he was at Hayes and Yedding last year, 31 appearances down in the non-playable leagues, makes his return back to the playable leagues now. Um, Billy Viga is an 18-year-old, Viga, 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 18-year-old English striker, um, came in from the Arsenal Academy. Um, he's, he's, I mean, he's just a young pressing forward who he's going to run around a lot and hopefully be nice and energetic and probably, again, look at it being an option to bring off the bench initially. But the exciting thing about Vigar is his potential. Um, he is considered a future League 2 standard player. So if he can start to fulfil some of that potential with us, that would be lovely. And then Ben Forrest is a 21-year-old centre-back, um, another just another solid non-league centre-back, um, three-star or two-and-a-half-star current ability. He's another one with a five-star potential. Um, he started at Birmingham, ended up at our local rival Stafford. Um, last, are they local rivals? Stafford feels like it would be down the road from, from Levington. Um, must be. I need to look at a map. I think Stafford. I think Stafford is... Staffordshire is near Warwickshire. Local rivals-ish, Stafford, um, played a full season for them last year and now another one making the step back up to Tier 6. So it means at the moment, our squad depth is looking like this. 
pretty solid. We still need a lot of players. Don't get me wrong. We've still only got a first team squad of 16 players because one of those is greyed out. So we still need probably another eight new signings, I would think, to fill this squad out. There's certainly some gaps. Um, this isn't necessarily going to be our finished starting 11. I think we probably need at least one, maybe two more central midfielders. We do look a little bit light there, star rating wise. We could really, I'd love like a four star current ability um, striker just to come in and bag a load of goals for us. I think we need another goalkeeper to come in over the top of Roxburgh as well. The defense is looking very solid with Rice and Hill as, um, as a partnership. Um, Forsyth possibly dropping back from the midfield, but more likely Forrest in there as well. I like the um, the fullbacks we've got in the shape of Brown and um, what's his face, whose name I can't say, Ondo. I think we've made it, we're making a start. We've got loads more money left to spend. Um, we've still got one and a half thousand pounds a week of spendsies. So we go again. We're going to look to bring in another batch. And I think we're putting a squad together that's going to have a chance. We have a look at the season preview. The media prediction before we did the transfers, which I forgot to show you, um, I think we were 19th or 20th before transfers. The transfers we've done so far have moved us up to 15th, which is already higher than we were at any point last year. So we've upgraded the squad there. Uh, one of our one of our veterans, Adam Civita, is knocking around in this league as well. Should we bring him in for a third spell of one of my clubs? Probably not. But it's good to see us moving up the league. I think we'll be, we'll be comfortably mid-table this year, even with the squad we've got there. We haven't even looked at loans yet. There's plenty more still to do. I'm excited. Next batch of players are in, and we are now just about maxed out on a squad of 19 players. Um, we've used all of our budget now, so anyone else we add in, unless we find an absolute superstar, it's going to have to be a loan that isn't costing us anything. But let's introduce you to the next round of new boys. We've got Amari Theodros, who's a 16-year-old central midfielder with five-star potential. He's come into play in the under-18s. Don't expect to see too much of him this season, but he just he had lots of potential. So he was only £40 a week, so he's in. Um, the rest of these are for the first team. Cameron Lewis-Brown is an 18-year-old right-back. Um, he's a left-footed right-back. I'll never change. A left-footed right-back, I mean, realistically, we'll probably train him to play left-back. We've got plenty of decent full-back options. I'm not sure I want to be faffing around with an inverted wing-back um, playing in the National League North. But he is the best right-back we've got at the club, according to star ratings. Uh, Lewis Warrington is a player I remember signing a few years ago in FM, and he was brilliant. Um, he's a natural attacking midfield player, and um, we're probably going to be using him as a central midfielder, as a Mazala, as that attacking link uh, between the midfield and the attack. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential. Um, he's coming from Everton and I think he is going to be a very, very good player for us. Um, also, Elliot Andrew is a striker. Um, he's only five foot 11 and thinks he's a target man. As usual, I'm going to turn him into a pressing forward. 20 years old, three and a half star current ability, five star potential. Makes him better than any of the strikers we already had at the club. He was at Nottingham Forest previously. Sam Cornish is another midfielder who can play central midfield or as the holding midfield option. Um, he's 20 years old, three and a half star current ability, five star potential, um, done the done the non-league tour, at least on loan from Colchester. Um, never actually got a game at Colchester, but played a full season for Malden and Tiptree last season. Um, and then Callum Hawkins, our new goalkeeper, 22 years old, three and a half star current ability, natural sweeper keeper. You know I love a sweeper keeper. Um, a considerable upgrade on Roxburgh, better than uh, than Weaver was last year, which is always a good thing. Um, played half a season on loan at Mickle over last year, been at Burton forever, um, and has now decided to come and be a first-choice goalkeeper with us. In fact, we can adjust this now to make that a sweeper keeper. Again, all of that means our squad depth is now looking pretty healthy. We probably still need another two or three players they're probably going to be loans. Um, I'd like to bring in another centre-back for sure. I think we're probably looking better in midfield now. Um, maybe a right-back would be handy because we don't, aside from our left-footed right-back, we don't have an obvious choice at right-back. Maybe a holding midfielder, but really we're just looking for, we're looking for talent. We're looking for superstars to bring in on loan to really push us over the edge into being a team that can possibly have an outside chance at competing for the playoffs. Season preview-wise, we're still showing as 15th. I reckon with the right loan signings, that could push up into the top half of the table, which would be super.
Well, the start of this new season has come round all too quickly for us. We have brought in one more player. It's another goalkeeper. We now have five. Three in the first team squad, two young players. Um, Nika Liebert Hines, um, 20 year old goalkeeper in from Hereford, uh, formerly of Nottingham Forest. Just another good goalkeeping option. One thing we're not going to have this season is a problem where we're not able to drop the goalkeeper if he doesn't perform. We have plenty of options now. Um, we also lost possibly the greatest name young player we've ever had, Mike Mayle, who has uh, gone to Gateshead. We weren't able to agree a uh, professional contract with him at the end of his youth thingy because he went to Gateshead instead, which I don't think is a major loss. We've lost Mayle, but we gained um, Theodros, I think we'll end up better. I don't know if we're still able to do a comparison with Mail or if we've already forgotten everything we knew about him. But yeah, there you go. Um, the new boy, much better than the old boy. I think that's a significant upgrade. And uh, Theodros is a year younger as well. We are trying to get another player in on loan. Um, Jacob Niemczyk is a left winger, Polish under-21 international. Two goals at international level for Poland under-21s. He's at Burton who might as well be a parent club for us at this point. We're taking so many players off of them. Um, but he was on loan at Spennymore last year, um, only played four times, but we're trying to bring him in, him in, no wage contribution, play on our left-hand side, but he won't be in in time for the start of the season because we have reached that point. The summer is complete. This is what our new look team looks like. And I think that is, uh, it's a bit special. I think tomorrow we are going to see us start the season with a bang with matches against Blythe and Chester. So I think Blythe were one of the first teams we played last year. Uh, I'm a liar. They were one of the last teams we played last year and they beat us. But Chester were one of the other teams that only just avoided relegation last year. So that Chester match is going to be a key test for us in tomorrow's episode to see where we are. Media think 16th. I'd like to think we could have an outside chance at pushing for the playoffs. We know the National League... Uh, all, all three of the National League leagues are difficult divisions to get out of because of how few promotion places there are. Um, but playoffs do go all the way down to seventh place. So although I think promotion this year would be a tall order, getting into the top seven and failing in the playoffs, that's something of a speciality for me. So I'd like to think we'll be able to pull that off at least. But that is your lot for transfers. If you have enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.